Now, some of the videos that made me want to play bass were ones like this. And ones like this. What's going on? What's going on? Playing actual bass lines is the foundation of everything we do on bass. But a lot of times when I was learning, I noticed people kept telling me, hey, learn scales, learn this scale, learn this scale. But when I started practicing them and learning them, it didn't feel like a bass line. It just sounded like a scale. Then after some time, I noticed that arpeggios is the massive secret to make really groovy bass lines. So today, we're gonna be going over what arpeggios are, how to master them, and how to use them like the pros. So what are arpeggios? All arpeggios are, are chords played one note at a time. So here's an example. If I played a chord straight up simultaneously all the strings at the same time, you get this. But if I played them one note at a time as an arpeggio, you get this. Simple as that. All right, we can leave, we're done. But there's a little bit more to this. When I first started learning arpeggios, I thought you had to play them like you play, you know, normal chords, like, you know, this, like, like in this area with my fingers like this. But the way that I think about it, instead of going like this, where I could play all these at the same time, I just think about what notes are in the scale and I just go straight down my scale, all the way down from E string to G string like this. When you start thinking about these arpeggios as groupings of notes versus just chords, that's where your mind really starts to change the way you look at them. Now, when it comes to finding chords and using chords on bass, the way that I think about it is that you have these different kind of common options for bass for chords. And I'll go ahead and say, there are chords that have way more notes than this, but this is just the beginning way I like to think about it. You have three note chords, which we call triads, four note chords and five note chords. Now, three note chords is like the foundation of your chords, which are what we call triads. And just like I just played a second ago, I was playing a C major triad. And so all that means is that it has three notes in the chord, C, E, and G. The way I like to think about three note chords are like the foundational chords. They don't, they have some colors that are more like establishing if it's major, minor, or diminished, or dominant, or whatever, those kind of things but they don't have a ton of color. They just are very, very simple and straight to the point. But when you start adding more notes, like four note chords, you start getting more colors involved into it to where it has a little bit more of a stylistic vibe. And when you get to five note chords, there's even a little bit more tension and color in your chords compared to these triads as well. Now we're gonna learn a couple of triads that are pretty common when it comes to playing bass or just music in general, which is the major triad and the minor triad. Now, if you know your number system or scale degrees, it's just gonna be the one, the three, and the five that make up the major chord. And if you're a notes person, it's just gonna be C, E, and G. Now for the minor triad, it's just going to be the one, the flat three and the five has a little bit of a different tone, a little bit of a darker tone, but this is for minor chords. For a major chord, you have this major three or this three, and then you have the flat three for the minor chord. And that is the only difference between major and minor. Now, four note chords are pretty much the same thing, but just adding one little color note on top of that triad. Now I'm gonna go over some common four note chords that you can use pretty easily in a lot of situations here on bass, but it's pretty much built up the same way as a triad is. So for a major seven arpeggio or chord, you're gonna start off by playing the major triad, which is the one, the three, and the five. Now the only note you're gonna add is the seven, the major seven, which gives it like a different color. That's really all it is, it's just that. Very usable type of arpeggio. And the same goes for the minor seven. 
is that you're just using the minor triad, which is the one, flat three, five. Then you're just gonna add that minor seven, or that flat seven on the end, so you get this. And that's two very, very common types of four note chords. Now some other four note chords or arpeggios that you may come across as well that are pretty common is like the dominant seven arpeggio, which is pretty much playing a major triad, which is one, three, and five, but then playing, instead of playing a major seven, you're gonna play that dominant seven, which would just be a flat seven. So you get this. And it gives you kind of like a little bit more of a bluesier type of tone or sound. Now another four note chord or arpeggio that you may encounter playing a lot of gospel music is a diminished seven arpeggio, which goes like this. And all this is, is just playing a one, a flat three, a flat five, and a six. I know it sounds a little weird, but I'm telling you, if you're in the gospel world, you need to know that pattern because it's very, very used for a lot of crazy types of licks. Now, if you want some more tips and tricks on how to use the diminished seven, I did a video going over some licks that are kind of crazy and I'll link it right here. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple of five note chord or arpeggios that you can use that are a little bit more common, but these are ones that I just normally use a lot of the time, which is the major and minor nine. Now, the major nine, all it is is pretty much a four note chord adding one more extra color on top. Just like we did with the C major seven, we just did the one, the three, the five, the seven. All we're gonna do now is add the two or the nine. Yeah, so now watch this. Gives a little bit of a jazzier, kind of cooler tone. And I use this all the time. So building the minor nine is pretty much the same as the other one. All you're doing is just starting off with that four note minor seven, which is the one, the flat three, the five, and the minor seven. And then you're just gonna add the two or the nine to it. Right there, so you get this sound. Okay. And so it's pretty simple. All you're doing is just building up these chords and it's building up the colors and the different sounds on top of that triad, which is super easy to understand, at least, at least it is for me. So now how do you practice these and really get these down and under your hands? That's what we're going over next. Now the way that I practice my arpeggios to make sure I master them up and down the neck and all over is to play them in three directions. Let's start off with just like a quick major triad. If I play a major triad, the first direction I wanna go is up and down, which is like this. Which is basically just going from the E string to the G string, that's up and down. Now the next direction is vertical, where I go from this area right here up to the next area right here. So you get this. Now the last direction I practice is going backwards, which instead of going up the neck, you're going down the neck like this. And the best way to figure this out is to start your one or your first note, your root of your chord 
with your pinky. That always kind of leads you down to the right direction. But when you're here going up and down, I would start with middle finger. And even when I'm going up, I would start with middle finger as well. It's a vertical. Now, once you start practicing this way, now you're learning different ways you can play. And it's, I promise you, it's going to add a lot when we get to the later sections of this video. So what I would do is play with the metronome, or if you're still just trying to figure it out, just get it enough to where you can play it clean in all these different directions. And it's gonna do you really, really well. I do this with all of my different types of chords, three note, four note, five note, and I practice them in all these different directions. So here's an example, like a major nine. All right, vertical. And backwards. When you start to do this, you start to see where you can go with your arpeggios, where they can lead you. If you wanna go up the neck, you can. Now go that way. If you just want to go straight down, you could go straight down. Or if you want to go backwards, back this way. You can go that way. And it really, really helps you to identify and see the bass neck easier. Now, another way that I master my arpeggios is through playing inversions. If you don't know what inversions are, or if you played a piano before, if you ever seen somebody play like a, a C chord on the piano, it's a C, an E, and a G. If you play that normal in root position is what they call it, the C is on the bottom, your thumb is playing the C. But if you invert that, or what we call an inversion, where you change, you play the same notes, C, E, and G, but you just change the order, you play E, and then G with your, your second finger, and then C with your highest finger, or your pinky finger, then that's what we call the first inversion, and that's what an inversion is. It's the same notes just playing in a different order. So the way you have to think about it on bass is based off of patterns. So you're probably asking, how do you find those notes where to start? How do you know that that's the three? How do you know that that's the five? So what I've done in the past to find these notes is I play all three of the notes in the arpeggio, but just on one string. So if we know what the notes are, we have the C, we have the E and the G, or the one, the three, and the five. What I do is play all of those. So I'm playing on the A string right now. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just gonna play the C on the A string, the E on the A string, and then the G on the A string. And those are my different starting points for my different inversions. And you can also think about it as the one, the three, and the five. And basically when you identify those notes, what they tell you is where you should start with your pattern. And so when I start here, I got my one, three, five, one, I'm gonna play it like this. But when I start here, if I played that, whoa, 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 hold on, that's not it. And so like, it, you have to change your pattern to fit the notes that you're going for. So the notes that I'll be going for here is going to be the three, the five, the one, and the three. I like to go all the way until I get to the, G string or whatever the highest string is. Now, if I'm thinking about it in letters, it'd be E, G, C, E. Okay. And then that fifth note, which is right here, I'm just going to be thinking about, you know, the five, the one, the three, and the five. You can think about it in letters like this. It'd be G, C, E, G. But that's pretty much how you could think about inversions. So now the thing is, is that when you play this in three note, four note, or five note configurations, it's the same exact concept, okay? It's nothing different. So if I played a C major seven, that means I'm gonna have more inversions that I can do because there's more notes in the chord. When I did that first one, I just had three notes, the C, the E, and the G, or the one, the three, and the five. But when I play a C major seven, 
it's pretty much gonna be four notes, so it's gonna be C, E, G, and B. So you get that. Now you have four total ways you can play the pattern. The way you identify, just like I said before, play those same notes just on one string. So you have the one or the C, the three or the E, the five or the G, and then we have that seven, which or the B, they'll be right there. So I'm gonna go over all of these inversions for this major seven chord. And it works for any you know other notes. It's just like I've said before, bass is a pattern-based instrument, so you can just apply this to any other note and it's still gonna make a major seven in whatever note you play it on. Now the root position or the first position of this arpeggio is gonna start right here. All right, now the first inversion is gonna be right here. Now the second inversion is gonna be right here. Now the third inversion is gonna be right here, way up here. And when you get up here to this C, you just go back to where you were at the beginning. So here are the minor seven inversions as well, starting with the root position. First inversion. Second inversion. And third inversion. Oof, I knew that was a lot. But now what you do is you take all of these inversions and all of the root positions and every aspect of this and you Practice them in three directions. So if you're playing, let's just go to your my E string, playing the major seven, you're gonna practice in the vertical direction, you practice in the backwards direction. But then after that, what you're gonna do is go up to your inversion and do up and down direction. And then you're going to go vertical direction. Then you're gonna go in the backwards direction. Part of learning this is for you to figure them out on your own as well, because the more that you do it on your own, the easier it's gonna be for you to remember it and recall it when you actually play. So practice all of these arpeggios going in all these different directions so you can master where they are on the neck and also really be able to have that muscle memory to recount and recall that whenever you're playing and creating. All right, now the place that I've been wanting to get to in this video, how to use this to create bass lines. And the way that I utilize this is by utilizing certain rhythms with my right hand when it comes to playing arpeggios. So the first rhythm we're gonna learn is playing on the quarter note. And basically you're just going to use your choice of you know notes in your arpeggio. Let's say it's like a C major seven or major seven. And those are my notes. What I'm gonna do is just play on the 
quarter note on every single beat on like a loop, like this. So basically all I'm doing is playing on the beat. So if you heard a, a metronome going like, all I'm doing is playing each of these notes on each one of those clicks. So pretty much what we're doing there is playing that, but with a loop. And if you want this loop, this loop is gonna be in the description for free so you can practice with it. It's really fun to play with at this speed. And so basically what we're gonna do is play quarter notes over this groove and it feels really groovy and it feels kind of cool. Now, when you just play it straight up like this, it doesn't really sound really cool. So the way you really make it sound cool to make a cool bass line is to change up which notes you start with. So I'm maybe using this these notes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change which note I start on. Instead of starting on the one, I may start on the seven, the three, the one up on the octave, five, you know, and, and then create a groove. So you could be like. Now the next rhythm I use is doubles. And pretty much all doubles are is playing two notes at a time on each of the notes of the arpeggio. We'll use the major seven arpeggio again. And basically all we're gonna do is do two plucks on each note. Simple as that. So here's an example of me playing this with the loop. Now when it comes to playing doubles, all you're doing is just playing two notes at a time. You know, and it's just like, it's just cool. And so all you're doing is utilizing these arpeggios and just choosing those notes from the arpeggios to add to whatever groove or whatever you're doing to fill up some space without having to play like a big old scale. And adding too many notes and make it less groovy. Now the other way I use this is playing it on a skip, which basically I'm just playing just two notes, a double, and then like an extra note at the end. Ba, ba, ba. Like I said, if you just play it up and down, it's gonna sound cheesy and lame, but if you play it with the loop or play it with the groove, it feels a lot better. Here's an example of me using this rhythm with a loop. Now what's really cool about this rhythm is that you can actually play two notes on one note and then like switch to another note in the arpeggio you know, at the end for that last third note. But you see, it doesn't really, it's not, it doesn't hit as hard when you're playing by yourself, but when you play it with the loop, it is a ton of fun. Now this concept is a little bit more advanced, but it's pretty much using it with 16th notes and playing on the E of the 16th notes. So if you ever heard of 16th notes, you count it as one E and a, two E and a. So on all the E's or the upbeat, you play a note from the arpeggio. So watch, so I play, so one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, four E and a, one. <laughs> I can't even say it. But it's pretty much, you're doing the one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, and that's where you're playing your note when you're playing with the groove. Here's an example of me using this rhythm. Now the big key that with 
all of these different ways of using this is that all of this is compoundable. The secret of this is, is putting all of these together. So sometimes you can play a double, a quarter, and sometimes you can use the 16th note, you know, thing, or you can just kind of play around with all of these together. So here's an example of me playing all of them in their own way together. Now another way that I spice up these rhythms is by playing fifths of each note in whatever arpeggio you're playing. So basically all a fifth is, is where you play the fifth note of whatever the major scale is, or if it's a minor scale, so it says to be one, two, three, four, five, that fifth note. Usually my method of finding the fifth is go up two frets and down one string to find the fifth of whatever note you're playing. I could do that for anything, you know, wherever it is. And so that's how you find your fifth if you're trying to find it. So an example of that would be if I played a C major seven like I've been using, but I played the fifth note on each of those notes. So like this. You probably noticed when I went to the seven, that note doesn't sound that good. The reason why is because this note is not in the scale. That's like a flat five. So what I usually do when I get to a seven or to a note that's not in the scale, I just go up to, uh, for sevens, I just go up to whatever uh, the next note is and you could do this. So you, when you go up, you could be. And now, just like I said before, is you can use this with any arpeggio. So even if I want to go minor. So now what's really cool is now you can add those rhythms that we went over before to this. So let's say I wanted to use the quarter note rhythm. I could just be like. Okay, or doubles. And then even the skipping one as well. So here's an example of me using all these with the fifths method. Now, I know there was a lot of information in this video, so just take it one piece at a time. And honestly, if you just take one aspect and just dissect it for a month, two months, or even longer, however long you need, I promise you, you will be able to start using it in your playing like crazy. Now, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a comment below. And also, if you want the loop that I use in this video, I'll have it linked for free in the description below. If any of you guys want to support this channel, there's a couple ways you can. You can click and make a purchase on any of the links in the description below to where if you make a purchase through those links, this channel will get a kickback to bring you more videos. And also you can check out my website, travisdykesmusic.com to where if you make a purchase to any of our merch like this and a lot of other items, it will help support this channel as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you really want to take your bass playing to another level, check out this video.